Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh, please. Please be seated. I hope that welcome was for Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Well, Secretary Carlucci and Secretary Verity and distinguished international guests, we are here today for the signing of the Columbus Day Proclamation. It's on this day we revisit the enduring lessons of his courage and leadership. Columbus, of course, has always held a proud place in our history, not only for his voyage of exploration, but for the spirit that he exemplified. He was a dreamer, a man of vision and courage, a man filled with hope for the future, and with the determination to cast off for the unknown and sail into uncharted seas for the joy of finding whatever was there. Put it all together and you might say that Columbus was the inventor of the American dream. Of course, we recognize others besides Columbus today, for just as Columbus, a son of Italy, inaugurated the age of European exploration in this hemisphere, so too have millions of Americans of Italian descent contributed to the building of this nation of aspirations on this continent of hope. Over the years, millions have left that country for these shores, often carrying scarcely more than the prayers in their hearts and the determination in their souls. And as they've come, they've brought with them the richness of the heritage of their homeland and given its richness and strength to our land. Spain also claims Columbus and his achievements and millions of Americans of Spanish heritage have also followed in his wake. Like immigrants from all over the world, they have lived the American dream and made it a reality for themselves and their children and the generations that followed. Yes, Columbus Day is an American holiday, a day to celebrate not only an intrepid searcher, but the dreams and opportunities that brought so many here after him and all that they and all immigrants have given to this land. In the next few years, Columbus' voyage will take on a heightened significance. The year 1992 will mark the 500th anniversary of his sailing. It is called the Quincentenary, and it may take another 500 years before I can say that easily. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it will be a time when Americans from all backgrounds look back on all that voyage has meant to mankind over the past half millennium. We're already getting ready for the big celebration. Three years ago, I appointed a commission, the Christopher Columbus Quincentenary Centenary <laughs> Jubilee Commission to recommend ways for the nation to mark this milestone. The commission has submitted its report, which I've sent to Congress, Recommendations include educational programs to enhance the knowledge of history, geography, foreign languages, and international affairs among our young people. The Commission will be raising money from the private sector in order to plan and coordinate projects for the anniversary. The members of the Commission are with us today, so let me recognize them and say thank you to all of them for their efforts to make sure that the Quinn Centenary is a success. Now, before I sign the proclamation with all the celebrations we've seen having over the, uh, been having over the last decade or so, the Revolution, the Constitution, now Columbus Voyage, I can't help but being reminded of an old story. That's what happens when you reach my age. <laughs> yeah. You can't ever help being reminded of old stories. 
if you've heard me tell this one before, well, you're just going to have to hear me tell it again. It's about a man who wanted to become an opera singer in the worst sort of way. And he became an actor in Hollywood. But he was an actor only until he could put together enough money to travel to Milan to study. And he studied in Italy for two years and then finally was rewarded with being invited to sing at La Scala, the very spiritual fountainhood of opera. They were doing Pagliacci, and he sang the beautiful aria Vesti la Juba. And when he had finished singing, the applause from the orchestra seats and the galleries was so sustained and so strong that he had to repeat the aria as an encore. And again, the same sustained loud applause. And again, he sang Vesti la Juba. And this went on till finally he motioned for quiet. And he tried to tell them what this welcome meant to him on this, his first appearance in opera. But he said, I've sung Vesti la Juba now nine times. My voice is gone. I cannot do it again. And a voice from the balcony said, you do it till you get it right. <laughs> Now, it's time for signing. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for your kind words. In 1492, Christopher Columbus set sail on a momentous voyage of discovery. On October 12, 1992, this nation will witness the biggest birthday celebration the world has ever seen. The Christopher Columbus Quincentenary Jubilee Commission was appointed by the Reagan-Bush administration to plan and encourage the festivities for 1992 that will mark the 500th anniversary of the birth of the modern world. Columbus's landing in this hemisphere and his voyage back to Spain marked the beginning of a new era in history. We in the Commission are planning a variety of educational, scientific, and cultural events which take into account not only the contributions of the many immigrants who came to these shores looking for a new world, but also the sacrifice and achievements of our Native Americans. It is the hope that the program such as the Columbus Scholarship, funded from proceeds of commemorative coins and Ameriflora in Columbus, Ohio, will enhance the education of young people and provide the framework for a better understanding of the world in which we live. We see 1992 as an opportunity for the countries of this hemisphere to come closer together. We see the United States solidifying the close ties it already has with Italy and Spain and the rest of Europe. And we seek to join our friends in Asia in a symbolic attempt to com complete Columbus's dream of finding a shorter route to the Orient. Mr. President, we want 1992 to be an occasion to celebrate the peace that you and your administration has fostered and attained for world today. Just as we are proud to welcome back our shuttle discovery this afternoon, I am delighted to announce that the United States will welcome back the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria in October 1991. After an official reception here in Washington in the spring of 92, they will lead the tall ship parade in New York Harbor on July 4th and continue to celebrate Columbus Day in San Francisco. When Christopher Columbus began his famous travels, he left an imprint for the future of every American. The quincentenary will ensure that this contribution are recognized by this generation and that his dream will continue with the generations of the future. It is this spirit, Mr. President, that I would like to present to you on behalf of the members of the commission and Mr. Tom Setti, the Columbus Monument Committee of Florida, our first registered project, 
with a statue of Columbus as a token of our appreciation and to symbolize how a single person with courage, vision, and determination such as yourself can make a world anew. Thank you very much, sir.